horrifying news. Today we're reading Tanner's mission journal. Yeah. <laughs> Zelf. On the shelf. This is my MTC journal. For those of you who don't know what MTC stands for, it is the Missionary Training Center. I went to the Missionary Training Center in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2009, and this is that. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is going to read it, do some perusing, and respond to it real time for you. Did you guys know that Rosetta Stone went to the... Mormon leaders and said, please teach us how to learn languages as fast as we <laughs> And the missionaries were like, we can't teach it, it's the spirit. It's the spirit. Are we just going to be drinking booches from <laughs> <No>. now on? <laughs> 2009? I wasn't even Mormon in 2009. Whoa. What a time. Wow. Today was my first day in the MTC. Boring, 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 boring. <laughs> boring, boring, boring. <laughs> I think I'm really going to enjoy the CTM, especially once we are more in the zone. So far it's felt like a bunch of 19 year old boys visiting Brazil. I have to perpetually remind myself, and hopefully others by my actions, why I'm here. I am not here to learn another language or experience another culture. <laughs> it's funny because like missionaries always come home and they just feel like they're so assimilated with the culture of the country they went to and you're just openly saying like, I'm not here for that. I am Africa. <laughs> <laughs> My purpose isn't to meet new people or try new food. It is to teach the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I am certain that once we begin classes and such, the real nature of who we are and what we are doing will sink in. Okay, boring, boring, boring. Oh, he's having a terrible day. Shh. Oh my god, I just. Oh. Kids. <laughs> can't, you can't kill them. <laughs> I've been trying to keep conversation uplifting and gospel oriented. I'm also trying to be 100% obedient, even in the little things. I probably seem like a buzzkill. I and will. truly, I was yeah, for the were. first bit. <laughs> One elder said, that rule is a little extreme. I said laughing, well, <laughs> that's kind of what we signed up for. I bet you were so annoying. I would have, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> truly a trial for everybody. Truly. <laughs> you were the trial of everyone's mission. Uh. Um, the parade in the room is making journal writing very difficult. I guess I'll just write tomorrow. Passive aggressive, even to myself. <laughs> even to yourself. Arg! There's only one rule we break, and it's the one that is so inconvenient to break. We stay up talking to Elder Lima, which means we're not asleep by 10.30, which means we are tired in the morning. We have to get better at this. Okay, I'll stop writing and start trying to be more obedient. Um, I, definitely, I don't think we talk about enough about missions. You know how um, it's a common cult tactic to like deprive you of sleep yep. and food, yep. or like things that just make you disoriented and more easily manipulated? Yep. That was totally the entire mission life. Like, we were so exhausted 24 7, constantly. So it never ends. It's just cats and trains and spills. So, um, to be clear, you writing in your journal wasn't obedient enough. Just fucking, like, if one of them kills the other, then it's like <laughs> fair dead. enough, yeah. you know? Like, Yesterday a teacher told us a story from his mission in the US that really touched me. He didn't want to learn English and he didn't want to be in America, so he was having some resentful feelings. We're all having some resentful feelings <laughs> right now. <sighs> well, they started teaching a woman. She wasn't being receptive, but he felt prompted to challenge her to be baptized. As he was doing so, he felt an overwhelming testimony that he knew that woman and that he had promised in the pre mortal life to bring the gospel to her. Such a faith-affirming story that he felt cap comfortable manipulating that woman into being baptized. That's one of my least favorite Mormon little pet doctrine things, the mm -hmm. whole pre-mortal life, you know what's gonna happen Because anyone to can just be like, I got a prompting that this happened in the pre-mortal life. Like, yeah, so dumb. Bullshit. And also, if you knew everything that was gonna happen to you, that like totally eliminates agency. Yeah. Like, if, you, if the outcome is already predetermined, Yeah then it's predetermined. There's no choice involved. Every factor influences every other factor, right? Yeah. Like butterfly effect. If one person in the 1800s did something a little bit differently, I, my life would be totally, would be non-existent, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's just horseshit. Today was really, a, this was a Sunday. He said, today was really a day of rest. Um, I wrote a letter to my family, then fell asleep. Elder 
blank and I napped for two hours. I felt bad for not capitalizing on my break, but it was really nice to rest. You're on a two year mission where you've given up everything and you felt bad for taking a two hour nap when you've just traveled from the US to Brazil like three days ago. And it was the last time in the mission we'd be allowed to take such a nap. <laughs> and later on in the entry you said, I started getting sick yesterday and it's continued on to today. So you're even sick and feeling guilty about <laughs> napping for two hours on a Sunday, the day of rest. <laughs> During the fireside, I remember the letter I got from Elder Blank. He told me not to wait around for a miraculous change in myself. I know I need to really buckle down and get to work. I know I have to push myself harder than I ever have before. It's going to be very, very hard, but I know that I'll be blessed for giving the Lord my all. It's his time I'm on. This is a wonderful time in life. I'm. It very well could be the only time I'm able to devote every second of every day to building the kingdom. Just a phrase that is like, doesn't even cross your mind, it's cold to you. <laughs> This video will be good because it will show the Mormons that are always like, you never really understood. It's like, oh wait, Tana's mission journal sounded like probably most of their mission journals. Like their mission journals are like, we have this elder with a stick so far up his own ass. <laughs> Tana got rebuked by a teacher for trying to do some kind of like hand thing that was like potentially that too, all missionaries okay, that, do. that was potentially too politically incorrect in Brazil. And Tana says, um, at that point, the teacher began lecturing me about how President Hinckley said we were supposed to be a new generation of missionaries and that we fall short of that when we do things that missionaries were doing when he was on his mission. Talk about humilidade! <laughs> oh, I haven't mentioned this, but like Tana will like randomly put words in Brazilian. Trying to learn that Portuguese. language miraculously. <laughs> Even though I think such a chastisement was not fully warranted, all the Brazilians I've talked to say that the finger snap means hurry up or a way to express excitement. I am glad to say that I not only took it, but I also took it to heart. I am a missionary. The bar has been raised. My personal bar must be raised. It's time to leave the world behind. <laughs> All those finger snaps that have distracted me from spreading the Lord's message. I haven't memorized the phrases for a testimony yet, so I did my best. <laughs> you gotta memorize that testimony. <laughs> Blank gave me another opportunity to be meek today. He told me to stop wasting the Lord's time chatting with another elder instead of working. Again, you're on a two year mission where you have devoted, in your own words, every second of every day to the church and just having like a brief moment of respite, but like chatting to another missionary. That teacher was just perpetually <laughs> grumpy, like s probably so, uh, um, repressed, yeah. that he was just like miserable and constantly taking it out on missionaries. Today I tried to strike up a gospel conversation and someone said, come on Elder, there is such a thing as real life. <laughs> <laughs> Elder Stacy and I exchanged puzzled looks. I thought the gospel was real life. Well, you, you were wrong. wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to create a better atmosphere in our room. It's now mostly people exchanging insults, slang terms, and singing dirty American songs. I'm playing my good music and encouraging uplifting conversation. It may be time I just come out and say, ENOUGH! Uh... The more I teach and learn about teaching, the more I am convinced that it is impossible for 20 year olds to convert people to the gospel. It is impossible for me on my own talent or persuasiveness to convince anyone to change their life and accept and join the church. I know it is impossible. The fact that I know that is a testimony to me that the gospel is true and that this is the Lord's work. <laughs> the, Quite fact the, that I, <laughs> the fact that I can know something without ever like have seen any evidence for it, it's never like I haven't actually tried I know. teaching anybody. The fact anybody that yet. no twenty-year-old has ever converted <laughs> anyone to a church before. <laughs> One of my nervous anticipations was realized tonight. Companion confrontation. Boom, and of boom. course it had to be about music. The problem is that music is a part of people. You attack someone's music, you attack them. I made the comment that we probably shouldn't be listening to certain music. I have made the comment several times. Anyway, my companion disagreed wholeheartedly. I just let the issue drop. It's better than contention. That's good. That's good that you didn't let the devil in. In a way, I feel bad for my companion. I'm sure I am a trial to him in multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> he was so nice to me. Like, he, he was so nice. This... To this day, he's like one of the nicest people. Really? Like, Mormons. <laughs> that interacts with me. It seems like most of the time I stand alone on sides of certain discussions. And then the next day, today I was feeling somewhat isolated from the members of my district. <laughs> I wonder how. <laughs> I wonder why. I found that I really like talking to the sisters in our district. I think our conversations tonight were Heavenly Father's way of reminding me that I'm not actually isolated, not from him and not from others either. I have felt that I should discuss ways to become a more divine companionship during a companionship planning session. 
Given the events of the day, I was apprehensive about doing it tonight, but I took courage and shared the idea. As we talked about the prophet, and as I related a story about Heber C. Kimball, I felt such great power. Again, it was like an invisible light had illuminated my whole body. As we walked to the bolo party, Elder Magleby put his arm around me, and together we sang praise to the man as we walked. <laughs> <laughs> It's like even him, who you thought wasn't like quite up to your standards, was still like willing to do that. <laughs> also, the bolo is the cake, right? Yeah. Tana mentioned in a previous entry I was reading before this video that um, they had cake every night in between what, like, before bed but after mm -hmm. something else. And he thought he should start skipping it so he could get in more study time. Again, on a mission, devoting every second of every day to this mission of this church. And he's like, I'm going to skip the cake thing that all the other missionaries are doing so I can go above and beyond. My testimony of Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, and the Restoration grows every day. I wonder why. Oh god. This is intense. A couple of days ago, we were waiting for our teacher to arrive, so I began to draw a picture of Nephi. Elder Blank challenged me to draw Joseph Smith in under a minute, so I did that too. The class liked the sketches, so we kept them on the board. Last night, we walked into the classroom and found that someone had erased portions of the drawing and left a note that said, Is this your time or the Lord's? And You're drawing um, Joseph Smith and <laughs> Nephi! What the fuck? It's just, it was such, like, everyone trying oh. to be more righteous than everybody else. What the f- that is insane. That's why Mormons are the way that they are on Twitter, isn't it? That's mm. why the men are so- like, the guy yesterday that was talking about how, like, women need to cover up or they're, like, inviting sexual assault. I'm like, yeah. that's why you're the way that you are. Like, the mission breeds this. Though my teacher and members of my district assured me that I, I had done no wrong, I was still put out by the note. Part of me was distressed that someone had passed judgment and misinterpreted my actions. Misinterpreted you drawing Joseph Smith and Nephi. The other part of me feared that I really had wasted the Lord's time. Both perspectives were disheartening. I want to be a good missionary. I'm really trying to stay focused and do all that I can do. I keep that note with me to serve as a reminder. This is so sad. Like, this is not like being a good versus bad person, but on the mission, like, this shit is what people are thinking about, and they mm -hmm. think that they're, like, leading people to God, as if God... This is just wild. Like, their concept of good and bad is so absurd and petty. And the fact that you would spend even a second of your day feeling bad for doing some little doodle, much less one of, like, the religion that you're there to be, like, immersed <laughs> in, is just absurd. Oh, I feel so bad for you. I love showering after the gym because that's when everyone sings hymns in parts. The only bad thing is that we can only shower for five minutes, so I can't enjoy it for very long. Oh, uh, everything that is normal to Mormons on missions is so insane. We can only shower for five minutes. We have to wake up at six. May the missionaries around me be blessed as they endure my constant singing and whistling. Oh, <laughs> Jester. Seems that like you're very tired. I had a pretty nice conversation with Elder Blank about obedience today. I get a lot of flack for supporting 100% obedience. Being obedient isn't hard for me. I am glad to make sacrifices because sacrifice brings forth the blessings of heaven. I know that I will be a better missionary if I am obedient to the Lord by being obedient to the mission rules and the CTM rules. <laughs> In fact, the Lord cannot bless me unless I am obedient to the laws upon which those blessings are predicated. <laughs> Just a casual That's way so a 19 year old would talk. <laughs> We're gonna be like, wow, Tanner is fucked up. <laughs> I think it's probably best that I speak English as little as possible. So now we've got the like further detachment from your real life, your family, mm -hmm. and everything coming in. And another thing to feel guilty about. And yet another thing to feel bad about, yeah. And like it just alienates you further because you can't ever communicate as well in a second language as you can your first. So it's just like further. It's just, it's like the whole, I'm um, in 1984, they like limit the, the number of words available get smaller and smaller in like a post truth society. And it's just like that. Like you're so limited in your language, which limits the thoughts you're able to have, which limits like the concepts you can think about, which like just entrenches you further and further in the mission and the religion. I've been hesitant about initiating conversations with Americans, no problem with Brazilians. Why is that? Mm. More hesitant about Americans. Probably was judging them harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your handwriting is getting progressively worse, like from your first yeah. entry. Interesting. It's like more frenzied. <laughs> I really look forward to communicating with my family on Wednesdays. You say, I've been wondering if I have been too uptight. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the Elder Holland Talk said, you must be a disciple of Christ from the moment you open your eyes in the morning to the moment you shut them at night. He then pled with the missionaries to basically grow up and get to know Christ by spending time with him in Gethsemane. I'm trying to facilitate a faith-promoting conversation, but it's not working out, and I can't think of anything else to write. So you did have the thought that you were too uptight, but then you were like, no. 
No, oh, no. This is good. <laughs> this is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Jesus wants for me to be miserable. This is what all my blessings are predicated on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess someone asked me what my favorite scripture was and I said 2 Nephi 4. Oh God, <laughs> oh wretched man that I am with your favorite verse. Of course it was though. <sighs> O wretched man that I am, and when I desire to rejoice, my heart groaneth because of my sins. Nevertheless, I know in whom I have trusted. <laughs> I don't want to be prideful, but I know that I am. I want to be, uh, you know that you are what? Prideful. Oh, oh God. I want to be with my Savior, I will give away all my sins to know him. The only reason you're like prideful is like, you've been taught to have your identity be in the church. Mm -hmm. So you're like, proud of that for obvious reasons, but like, also the church is like, you're never good enough, and if you think you're good enough, woe unto those who say all is well, you know? Mm -hmm. You're still sick, I have to blow my nose every five minutes, and I cough every time I try to speak. I can see blisters or something on my throat and tonsils. Every Thursday our district does some little service project for the CTM. This week we wiped down the hallway walls on the bottom floor. <laughs> That missionary humanitarian effort. <laughs> it wasn't really a needed service, but I like to think about projects like Henry Iring in the onion patch. I didn't come for the weeds. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just like there has to, there doesn't need to be a correlation right, between right. input and output. Right. It doesn't have to do any good for anybody it's not as about long as I'm busy <laughs> not thinking about how this doesn't add up. <laughs> it's not about effective altruism. <laughs> Today was an interesting day. Before dinner, someone started talking about science and religion. My curiosity was aroused, so I kept the conversation alive until dinner. In line for dinner, the conversation spread to others nearby. I was surprised at how much they knew on the subject, like science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were captivated by the conversation, so we invited the elders into our room to keep talking. I was a little hesitant to discuss a few of our topics, <laughs> evolution, <laughs> but it turned out well in the end because I heard my roommates say how inspired and filled they felt. When it was time to end our conversation, I asked the two elders to bear their testimonies. God, just having like a little conversation at dinner had to end with you asking them to bear their testimonies. Oh, wretched man that I am. You literally <laughs> self-brainwash the entire mission, don't right. you? Like once you're on the mission, you just self-brainwash, mm -hmm. essentially. I remember that conversation. There was an elder who, he was talking about transhumanism. He was like, I think that, you know, we're gonna, science is gonna help us do the resurrection and that's part of God's plan. And we were all just like, that guy's nuts. He ended up leaving the mission. Mm. Because he just like had so many doubts about Joseph Smith and things and, and like, like the way he was like okay was by like rec trying to reconcile Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I look back and I'm like, oh shit, that guy was under some serious internal pressure I yeah. wonder what he's up to these days Seriously, I if, if you're watching, <laughs> get in touch well, Later that night we went to their room and talked about the scriptures It was very uplifting Some of the elders in our district are really into talking about deep doctrine Most of it is unimportant at this stage in life and therefore fruitless to discuss when we talk, I always add in, it's not the knowledge that matters, it's what you do with it. How can we apply this conversation? <laughs> you are so fun on the mission. <laughs> I have so much respect for our district leader. He always says, I'm just a boy from Wyoming. <laughs> All I need to worry about is the simple revealed doctrine. What a guy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's so like, ugh, yeah, you're yeah. like subtle distrust of science really comes through, doesn't it? <laughs> I really respect this guy that's dumb as shit from Wyoming. No, no, I mean, I don't know. Today I was reading our search for happiness while I waited for Jim to start. I really like the book. Oh, God. While I was reading, I had a thought about the Holy Ghost, and so I asked elders blank and blank, what does it mean to be possessed? They decided that it was to have another spirit in our bodies. Another spirit can only enter if we allow or invite it. Like a vampire. <laughs> Though it may not always be such a conscious decision. I mean, this is just a good quote, whoever you are. Success happens when 10,000 hours of preparation meets one moment of opportunity. Boom, there you have it. Tony Robbins. <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Joe Brogan. <laughs> when I feel the spirit, I'm able to leave my sins behind. And my sins at this point were... Going to sleep Just at like 10.45 because you stayed up <laughs> chatting. I am so grateful for the blessings the Lord gives me every day. I feel like I really don't deserve them. He said, today as we were walking to class, we looked out the window and saw Elder Blank's parents across the street. We couldn't really talk to them, but it was still kind of dot 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 interesting. I they disapproved are, of oh, the whole yeah. thing. They are <laughs> oh, so, I, sorry, I thought he was getting picked up or something. No. We, they are trying to set up a meeting next week, which I am against, only because it's against the rules. We'll see what happens. 
Why is that your concern anyway? <laughs> Which I am against because it is. So why were they there trying to? Um, they were picking up his older brother who was uh, serving in Brazil. Okay. So they were all trying to see him, but right. they weren't technically allowed. They ended up getting permission, but I was like being a killjoy about the whole thing. Damn. Didn't want to be complicit in such iniquity. Instead of opening class with a Portuguese hymn, we sang we sang the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, it was on 9-11, that's fair enough. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, 9-11. <laughs> Every Friday, two or three missionaries from our district are chosen to re receive compliments from the district. <laughs> I was chosen today. People said they liked my humor, taste in music, and my random quotes from scriptures and general authorities. That seems a bit tongue-in-cheek there. <laughs> It's like when I talk to my mom and she's like, you just have so much information up there. <laughs> they said they liked how I want to share everything I know about the gospel. They were good comments, cheek. but the more critical side of me took it as, I need to talk less. <laughs> Once I reminded myself that it isn't a sin to be complimented, I was very much <laughs> uplifted by the activity. Once he'd reminded himself that it wasn't a sin to participate in a mission, I mean, Presumably this is like set up by the, you know, the people in charge, it's not... Yeah, the teachers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Elder Blank and I say, um, so much. We decided that we will count every time we say it and then we'll have to match that number in push-ups. Just trying to make the mission interesting. <laughs> Our district decided to do a push-up for every English word we say during lunch. <laughs> ah! <laughs> not enough like boot camp, we gotta... <laughs> Innovate a little bit. Mm, this is... Sometimes, most times, I get so excited about a particular principle of the gospel in general that I can hardly keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I've taken to asking people before I speak, are you ready for a sermon? <laughs> That's what I should start doing, honestly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if like... they say no, then forget it. But if they say yes, boy, I let them have it. I'm really fun at parties. <laughs> you can see ways that like this has influenced your personality now, but totally. now it's like far more palatable and like, <laughs> you know, the things you preach about are like interesting and like you know it's just funny because like people even then were like recognizing your humor mm -hmm. you obviously were passionate about music and art and um well i feel like now you're very careful with speech like you like process internally whereas i'm always just like blah mm -hmm. so it's it is interesting seeing all the links now I just talk into the void of into the internet the void. <laughs> support us on patreon <laughs> what sucks about this too is like i know every time i'm writing I'm realizing that I'm writing it for my descendants, yeah. so I want them to know how righteous I was mm. by like constantly being a martyr about every goddamn thing. Damn. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a way, like, it's like true thought policing, isn't it? Even your journal, like, your only real... It can't be authentic in my journal. Yeah. I get that, I, my mom eventually told me, she was like, make sure you also write the bad things in there. Mm. Because you want to be the real you. And I was like, oh, yeah. So. John 7:17 7, says that if we keep the commandments, we can know whether the doctrine is from God or not. I found that the same is true for the rules here. When I am obedient to even the seemingly insignificant rules, my mind is enlightened and I can see the purpose and need for those rules. Ha ha. My enlightenment about me no throwing things out of windows came when I was teaching tonight and an apple came crashing into the apartment a foot away from me and then someone spit landed on my shoe. I thought, ah yes, the no throwing rule is a great rule for the CTM. <laughs> I'm only eating meat for one meal now. The other day we were joking that with all the meat they serve us, they might as well give us coffee too. It was a joke, but I feel better about eating less meat. That's good. They seriously, it was like... For lunch, it was like ham sandwich, or breakfast was ham sandwiches, lunch was beef and chicken, and then dinner was beef and chicken. I forget how Mormons justify the whole only eat meat in winter in times of famine thing. Yeah. It's... Are they even trying? No, they're just like, um, it means, it means twice a day, because three times a day is excessive. Only in winter or times of famine. That seems so clear. It's Clearer so than clear. the hot drinks thing. Totally. <laughs> like literally just like some church leader decided he wasn't like that into that rule and then that's just how that went. Yeah. And they now none of them care about it. The so weird. Is so weird. Incredible. Today I was reminded that the Saviour loves me. I've always known it, but I guess I've been so preoccupied with telling others that I forgot to apply it to myself. Today we heard from the founder of JetBlue. What? Yeah. The airline? Yeah. We just like randomly came to speak? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We sang a battle hymn called To Serve Medley. <laughs> 
every like sentence you write is like in church speak honestly mm -hmm. you just like keep talking about growth and it's like there's no growth present here it's just like further entrenchment isn't it mm -hmm. you talk about how your sense of time is really bad on the mission which makes sense I was worrying about my testimony of the Book of Mormon. I felt that I had not received an answer to my prayer that would give me enough confidence to promise other people that their prayers would be answered, and the veracity of the Book of Mormon confirmed to them. In other words, my belief and testimony was enough for me, but maybe not enough for <laughs> others. That is so telling, isn't it? That's always the case. Because missionaries all the time will be like, pray about it, and people will be like, yeah, nothing really happened. And then they're like, well, then it was your fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, then what's the point of asking them? I was struggling over the matter, so I took it to the Lord in prayer as I was praying and experience from when I was 14 was brought to my remembrance. I remembered a time when I'd gone to the woods and prayed. I remember riding my bike home and feeling so much love and joy that I thought I would burst. At the time, I did not recognize it as the spirit, but as I prayed and relived that event in my mind, all I could think was, was that not the Holy Ghost? Was that not an answer to your prayers? You have a testimony of the Book of Mormon. It's honestly how I feel driving home from work, just like overwhelmed with joy and... <laughs> And it was like in the springtime after I had been yeah, depressed all yeah, winter, yeah, yeah. Like, like riding my bike through the woods, exactly. I was like, ah. Nature, sunshine, <laughs> biking. The other one? biking, endorphins, yeah. <laughs> I have a testimony of the Book of Mormon, the Spirit has borne witness to me, blah blah blah. I hear thy voice, Lord, ever calling, come my child and follow me. And if thou giveth me thy whole self, my choicest blessings are for thee. So if I'm called to leave my family, my spacious home and precious things, all I have I'll give up gladly for the joy thy goodness brings. If I'm sent into the desert with no means to find my way, oh dear Lord, please be my compass, and by thy light I'll go each day. P.S. This is like totally good enough for the enzyme. Oh, thank it's, you. <laughs> in the wilderness, Low bar, but thank you. Well, like, it's like a, a simple rhyme structure, but yeah. it's like you're good. <laughs> in the wilderness yeah. I'll wander, and mine afflictions I shall bear, for this loneliness and sorrow will bring me close to thee in prayer. So you felt loneliness and sorrow. I'll walk until I find a mountain around which I cannot go. I know with thee it will be removed and like the valley be made low. But if the mountain is not leveled, though in faith I give commands, strengthen my faith and I shall labor to move it daily with my hands. That's an accent. <laughs> it's an accent thing. When the desert turns to ocean, I will sail at thy command. Teach me, Lord, to build the vessel to take me to the promised land. So according to instructions given, I'll build a ship across the sea across the sea and while I work I'll know that surely thou dear Lord art building me when on the deep a storm is raging and the waves are crashing down and my ship is wrecked and sunken and it seems that I shall drown I'll lift my voice and cry to heaven while the waves flood over my head if thou won't save me from the water Lord please Lord please give me strength to tread and if I make it back to dry land glory to thy name I'll give but if not I'll be contented for with thee again I'll live. It's uh, interesting how many things in that is like, I'll ask God to do this and even if he doesn't, I'll be extra faithful. And if, you know, like you talk about um, <laughs> if the mountain is not leveled, then you'll move it with your hands and you talk about how like you'll pray that the Lord will save you, but if he doesn't, then, you know, it's like, it's just nothing is a, everything points to the church being true. Like that's the, that's the conclusion you're yeah, always... There's no actual test or yeah, evaluation yeah, yeah. of like, legitimacy. <laughs> yeah. I just realised I haven't named all the members of our district! <laughs> and then he just lists all the members of the district. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting right now as a semi-silent observer to an escalating problem. A couple of nights ago, some elders in the floor above us were dangling a chain of ties out of their window. Big no-no! <laughs> and an elder on our floor grabbed it and distributed the ties to elders on our floor. The eldest above us were caught in the act and were subsequently chastised. Oh, they're just like dangling some ties, like just trying to have like bare bones fun. Today they wanted the ties back. Because of pride, the ties were withheld from them. Now it's come to contention. <laughs> the worst thing a Mormon can experience. Contention! I'm on my bed watching the scene unfold. Pride, pride, pride. <laughs> the elders on my floor won't accept the apology of the other elders. Earlier they had been very rude and let this whole thing sink into the past. They'd rather hold on to pride by holding on to the ties. The other elders are gone now, and the elders here are just stewing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big drama, drama. In the MTC. <laughs> it's interesting to observe. I don't think I'm better than anyone else. I just didn't happen to be involved. I just wonder how the work 
can continue when the representatives of Christ and his church are not acting like representatives at all. Ha, huh, how easy it is to see the moat. My own pride is a big enough problem on its own. <laughs> it's like it is, but your problem is like just ego. It's not like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not that you're like actually, cause you like hate yourself and like, you're prideful, but you're, it's all just because you're like thinking about yourself too much. You're like, my, you're just so That's exactly obsessed. That's exactly Because the ego is all about uh, convincing you that you're separate, right? Exactly. It's and not... so that's what I'm constantly doing, yep. is making myself feel, yep. feel separate so that I feel isolated, so that I feel like what I'm doing is mm -hmm. I'm suffering for the Lord's sake. When yeah. all I'm doing is stoking my own ego and irritating the people around me. <laughs> yes, exactly. I know I can and need to get more out of my scriptures. This is coming from someone who's reading them for hours a day and basically writes in scriptures <laughs> in this journal. I know my mission has incredible potential to forge me into the person I will be forever. It's all gone. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> I remember this Elder Holland talk on the Book of Mormon. He said he held it up in the book in a manner of utmost seriousness with all the majesty of any prophet from scriptural accounts, testified with more power to the veracity of the Book of Mormon than I have ever heard with my mortal ears. It's true! Um, I only have a minute, but I thought that the first day in the field warrants an entry. This is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm going to be fighting discouragement for a while, I think. I can't even understand my companion most of the time. That's all I have time for today. Okay, so you got to the mission and realized. <laughs> and then there's a whole page of crossed out things of me being like, this sucks so bad. So you would cross out so when depressed. you were negative <laughs> in your journal. Okay, well, this has been a good MTC episode. Mm -hmm. I do think we should do some more episodes of this and in the future we'll pre-scan the entries mm -hmm. so that we can give you guys the really good ones. The meat. So if you want us to do that, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a nice comment and subscribe and support us on Patreon. Yay! Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.